ओम विश्वंदर्पण दृश्यमान नगरी तुल्य निजातर्गत पश्यन्नात्मनि मयया बहिर्वोद्भूत यथा निद्रया यक्षात्कुते प्रबोध समये स्वात्मेवाद्वयम तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नमहद श्रीदक्षिणामूर्त बीजस्यांतरिवाकुरो जगदीद प्राकलपुन माया कलकलना वैचिचित्रीकृत मयावीव विजृंभयती महायोगी वयस्वेच्छया तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नमहद श्रीदक्षिणामूर्त तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नमहद श्रीदक्षिणामूर्त ओं सहना सहनौ भुन सह वीर गरवाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मिदा वह ओं शाति शाशा सदा शिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओ वर्स हंड्रेड एंड सिक्स तथा पुं विशेष घटते से निंत्रता अव्यवस्थ बंध मोक्ष आपतेता मिहान्यता सब टू वर्स हंड्रेड एंड थ्री दिस जीवात्मा विवेक इज डन एंड इनिशियली विद्यारण्य हेज टॉक्ट अबाउट और एनालाइज जीवात्मा एस पर वेदांत सिद्धांत एंड देन ही टॉक्ट अबाउट द कन्फ्यूजन्स रिगार्डिंग दिस जीवात्मा एंड द वेराइटीज ऑफ द कन्फ्यूजन्स आर द साइज ऑफ जीवात्मा एंड नेचर ऑफ जीवात्मा आइडेंटिटी ऑफ जीवात्मा नंबर ऑफ जीवात्मा समन से इज वन समन से इज मैनी एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा सो ऑल दिस देर आर इन्यूमरेबल कन्फ्यूजन्स एंड वेल हेल्ड बाय दिस आस्तिकाज एज वेल एज नास्तिक and finally he dealt with that uh, yoga philosophers who talked about jivatma and that we topic we concluded in verse 103 now in verse from verse 104 we have a tatpada viveka ishwar viveka so analysis of uh, ishwar and definitely here there is no number of number of ishwaras regard i mean the confusion regarding number of ishwara that won't be there but at least the nature of ishvara etc well that is that is uh, definitely there is there are varieties of opinions and uh, and here well he does not talk about uh, the siddhanta first well what vedanta has a view regarding ishvara that he doesn't talk about first it comes later and uh, well but of course we can in in brief we can tell it has a three components jiva or ishvara either has a three components and uh, well one is real other two are mithya so consciousness is real and then well consciousness get reflected we call ishvara in a macro medium called maya etc and so well maya is mithya etc and then ishvaratvam that chidabhasa also even though it's a macro reflection but it is mithya any reflection is mithya ultimately anyway so and the consciousness is real so definitely so this is but that will be told later and uh, here vidyarnya first talks about the confusions and he talks about ishvara confusions uh, and of of course of these varieties of the confusions well he talks uh, he starts with the yoga people what do they say regarding ishvara how do they define ishvara from verse 105 to 108 and uh, well he accepts uh, jiva is also atma ishvara also is atma and uh, in place of word atma well yogi uses the word purusha so both ishvara and jiva are purushas only for ishvara he uses a, a purusha vishesha special purusha special atma and uh, both of them jivan ishwara 
as per their philosophy, both have essentially same nature. Means both are sangam, both are unconnected, unrelated, both are uh, all-pervading, and both are pure consciousness. And so, uh, then, well, of course, if both are identical that way, then the question is, if but if Jiva and Parma, Jivatma and Paramatma, Rasanga Chaitanya, and other other things are also similar, then uh, well, how the how, how there is a difference between Jiva and Ishwara? Why don't you have a Mahavakya? And so you better accept our Mahavakya, what is talked in the Upanishad. No, no. Jivatma and Paramatma, even though essentially same, but uh, Jiva is basically uh, Jivatma is affected by fourfold factors. So Jivatma is affected by the Klesha, varieties of the problems called Avidya, Asmita, Raga, Dvesha, Vinivesha. And then, um, then uh, Jiva has a Karma, he is afflicted by the Karma, Purnya, Papa, etc. And then Vipaka, Karma Phala will be there. And then Ashaya, he has varieties of the Samskaras. And so Jivatma and Paramatma, even though both are Asangam, both are Chaitanyam, both are all-pervading, still Jivatma is affected by fourfold factors. Ishwara is not affected by four four factors and so that is how Paramatma is samsara rahita and Jivatma is a samsari. That is the difference between them. And that is how Paramatma is called Purusha Vishesha, is a special Purusha. Jivatma is a non-special Purusha. So because we are afflicted by uh, all these things, four four factors. And uh, Ishwara is definitely is a controller because he is not he is free. He is from, free from Ragadvesha. He is free from Avidya. He is free from Abhinivesha. He is free from Karmas, Punya Papa, etc. He is free from all Karma Phala. He has not to undergo experiences of varieties of the pleasures, pain, etc. So he is a Niyanta. He is a controller. And Jivas are basically controlled. That is the difference between them. So Ishwara is one who manages the Karma account. Karma being a Drishtam. Jiva does not, uh, you know, uh, I mean, know the karma. And so where is the question of controlling, right? Jiva cannot control karmas because basically they are adrishtam. If you can't uh, perceive, how will you control? And therefore, definitely Jiva cannot control. And if other thing also is, if Jiva is uh, given a power to control, well, he will definitely favor himself. And uh, therefore, Jiva cannot control. Jagat cannot control. It's an inert entity. So Jiva and Jagat both cannot control. Ishwara is the one who is a karma faladatha and well, he is a controller. And therefore, he says we have to, Yogi says we have to necessarily accept Ishwara. And that he, of course, he is telling to Sankhya philosophers who does not believe in Ishwara. He says you better believe in Ishwara because such a niyanta should be there, etc., etc. And uh, well, uh, but you were yesterday, Swami is saying that uh, he, he was addressing uh, to us also. Yeah. So now I'm telling you this. He is telling us that well, Ishwara is there. We say yeah, we accept. We accept Ishwara. But then he says Jiva and Ishwara are different also. That we don't accept. Or else we say, well, if you are saying us that there is a Ishwara of this creation who controls Jiva, etc., or Jagat also. Yes, we accept. Then he says, Jiva and Ishwara are different. We say, yes, Jiva and Ishwara are different. Yeah. But then, there is a difference. Still, there is a difference. Even though we are agreeing to him, there is a difference. So, from Vyavarika Drishtya, well, we accept Jiva and Ishwara are different. Right? From Vyavarika Drishtya, Jiva and Ishwara are different. Well, essentially, they are one thing alone. Like, you know, the ornaments, you, you know, there is a difference in ornaments. It's all in transaction. Actually, essentially, it is one thing alone. And therefore, this is all in differences between Jiva and Ishwara, Mithya, basically. Vyavarika means Mithya. So, in the transaction, Ishwara is a Karma Phala Data, Jiva is the one who receives Karma, Karma Phala, etc. Ishwara is the one who is a Niyanta. It's all Vyavara. And the Jiva, Jiva is the one who is a Niyantrita, basically, is controlled. And so, all this is a transactional reality. And it is Mithya and therefore ultimately Jiva and Ishwara is basically in terms of reality, there is no difference between them. That's what we say. From Vyavarika Drishtya, we accept Jiva and Ishwara are different. 
In fact, we accept jivas are many also. Ishwara is one, jivas are many. We accept. We accept. But that is true. That is very true. Because the mediums are many, reflections are many. But sun is one. So that is, uh, so we don't have any problem. But if you say, well, the, the manyness of these reflections uh, are there, and therefore many suns are there, well, that we can't accept. Because they are mithya actually. The medium is mithya, and the reflection also is mithya. And therefore, we accept uh, the difference uh, in jivas. We accept the difference between Ishwara and Jiva also. But that is from a certain standpoint, not in reality. So, um, uh, so he says here, Anyatha means if you don't accept, he is telling to Sankhya only. So, if you don't accept this Vyavarik Ishwara, who is a Niyanta, etc., well, uh, there will be a, you know, there will be a chaos. Because, uh, you know, like it's like a traffic. It's like our traffic, you know. Traffic also, if there is a no traffic police in India, I am telling. All right. uh, in India, if there is a traffic police is not there, then there is a chaos there. So same way, in the creation, there will be a chaos if there is a no niyanda. But everything is in order. That's how Puja Swamiji talks about. That order is Ishwara. So you find a order everywhere. And therefore there must be a controller. If you see, if even if you don't see, uh, I mean a controller in a, in a given factory, but everything is work functioning smoothly in that factory. In the office, in the production, everywhere the things are working in a systematic manner, then there must be a control. Whether you see it or not, it's not, a, it's not the issue. So, in the creation, everything is in order and therefore there must be a controller who controls the creation as well as the jivas in the creation. And so, uh, so uh, here he says, Abhyavasthau Bandha Mokshau, means if you don't accept this such a uh, Ishwara, well, Abhyavasthau, there will be a disorder. Uh, regarding what? Bandha Moksha with respect to Bandha and Moksha. Means uh, basically, uh, I mean you do a sadhana, right? Purusha, Prakriti, Prakriti Purusha Viveka you do. You do Ashtanga Yoga Sadhana etc. And do Nirvikarva Samadhi and you realize yourself as a Purusha who is Asangaha, who is all pervading, who is just consciousness. And uh, well, you do that and uh, I get Moksha. That, how, how it is possible? And not only just Bandha Moksha regarding Janma Maranam etc. also. And uh, there will be a problem. And uh, you know the wrong Jiva, I mean basically a, a wrong Jiva gets a, a wrong body etc. A Jiva who has done a lot of Papam. And um, well, and he gets a very Devata's body like that. So that, that kind of Vivastha uh, won't be there if there is no Niyanta. A Niyanta who is there, who is a Karma Phala Data and definitely everything is in order. Everything is as per the karma. Therefore, as per the karma, then karma gives, uh, karma is a niyanta. No, karma cannot be niyanta. Any jadam cannot be niyanta. Jada thing cannot be niyanta. There must be a conscious entity who controls through that thing. So, so well, definitely, so this bandha moksha avyavastho apatetam. So, there will be a disorder regarding janma maranam, bandha moksha, etc. Apateta, so will will happen. So aplas pat dhatu, pat patati, you know very well. So that is a parasmipada root, and this is a vidiling. So apatet, apateta, apate yuhu, etc. These are the forms. So apateta is a vidiling, and uh, uh, you know pratham purusha dvivachana. So bandha moksha apateta dvivachana. Anyway, so he's telling to sankhyas better accept Ishvara. Verse 107. Bisha Asma Dittiva Madhau Asanga Separatmanaha Shrutanta Dyukta Mapyasya Klesha Karma Dyasangamat. Now, Yoga philosophy continues. I told you verse from verse 105 to 108, he is defining Ishwara. And now, here he says, uh, so in support of his view, that Ishwara is a Niyanta, he gives a Shruti Pramana. Yesterday also I told you, all these people, they will uh, search a support in Shruti, in order to argue, especially in the Vedanta, especially in the Astika circle. 
if you want your view to be accepted you have to uh, quote from the shruti that what view you have or you may hold basically has a support from the shastra so everyone has to quote and somehow fortunately and fortunately everybody gets some statement which supports their view so that is another problem anyway so he gives a shruti praman so taitiriya upanishad 281 bishasmat vatav pavate bishodeti surya bishagni chendrasya mrutyur dhavat panchami mrutyur dhavati panchama iti so this is a statement now he is quoting this so to establish ishvara as a niyanta he is he is quoting this mantra so what the mantra says well ishvara is a controller of all the jivas he is controller of even exalted jivas that is what it is this mantra is quoting not just ordinary jivas exalted jivas also who control other jivas even dev those jivas those exalted jivas are controlled by ishvara and therefore well ishvara is a niyanta etc he is he is uh, getting a support from for his view and uh, who are those exalted jivas who have gone to swarga who are basically you know like a cabinet ministers <laughs> right we all are there here in 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 this um, in this india all jivas are there all beings but some of them are exalted who have gone to such a post cabinet ministers and prime minister and all that well definitely same way some all the jivas out of them some of the jivas have done a very exalted karmas therefore they have got exalted birth and uh, well that so so they are superior jivas anyway and all they are called and they are called devatas so they are also jiva but they are called devatas how do you call some ji dev devata is a jiva well you if from one standpoint devata is a ishvara from other standpoint devata is a jiva devata is a jiva can upanishad really proves right so indra has to go for brahma gnanam etc <laughs> so he is also in in chandogya also prajapati vidya in the eighth chapter there also same thing this indra and virochan went to brahma ji for gaining brahma gnanam so is a jiva definitely and well from which standpoint you are saying he is ishvara because basically the, the, this jiva also is a manifestation of ishvara only and therefore and that's an exalted manifestation and therefore well like a sun all these you know varieties of the now natural elements we call they are we don't call them as a just inert things they are also sentient because basically what happens is ishvara is uh, this entire creation is ishvara's body and so all the manifestations are Ish- well, they are ishvara's limbs of that body called virat purusha so sun is a manifestation so when you look upon ishvara from the standpoint of sun we call it surya devata when you look upon just this wind uh, when you look upon ishvara from the standpoint of the wind well definitely because everything is sentient like this my body varieties of the limbs are there all are sentient and so you can look upon me from any standpoint uh, so and therefore same way this whole creation basically is a is a ishwara's manifestation ishwara's body called virat purusha and so any one of them is a limb and so you look upon uh, ishwara from that given standpoint is called devata and so that is devata is also a manifestation of ishwara even i am manifestation of ishwara you are also manifestation of ishwara so this is and so from one standpoint i am jiva from other standpoint i am manifestation of ishwara also anyway so uh, ishwara, i mean this uh, the superior jivas even this devatas etc are controlled by uh, ishwara therefore ishwara is a niyanta and uh, well uh, so it says bisha smat vatah pavate asmat bisha vatah pavate asmat means ishwarat bisha bish there is a this is a word bish shakarantah and bish shabdah and well is a tritiya vibhakti ek vachanam bisha means bhayena bhayena out of fear of ishwara so bisha asmat means ishwarat vatah pavate vatah vayu pavate flows and so 
are functions. And so, out of fear of Ishvara, this wind and blows functions. This Vayu Devata functions. And so, Iti Eva Madhav Iti means this kind of quotations are there. So, because other things are also there. Bisha Smat Vata Pavate Bisho Deti Surya. This sun, Surya Devata, also functions out of fear of Ishvara. So, and it looks right, they are very controlled and uh, they don't suddenly don't go on live. You don't find them, just they go on live. And so, as if they are really controlled and out of the fear of uh, that Ishvara, everyone is functioning continuously. So, this, this is his quoting uh, for his, uh, you know, for his opinion regarding Ishvara, that Ishvara is a niyanta, for that he is quoting this. So, iti evam adau, like this, his statements are there, statements are there. Paratmanaha asangasya shutam, tat shutam. Tat means this old lordship of Paratmana, of par Paramatma, who is Asanga, has been Shrutam, this has been quoted in the Shruti. Yuktam cha, well, and well, well and, he, and he is quoting, you see, he is, I mean, Vidyarne is saying Asangasya Paramatmana. Why he should tell? He should say, well, this Paramatma is basically, is has a old lordship on even Devatas, etc. He should tell that much. Why Asanga uh, he is bringing? Because that is what our yogi believes. So, Asanga, uh, so yoga defines Ishwara as Asanga Chaitanya. And, uh, well, and by that, Vidyaranya wants to prove that it is logical. For Asanga Chaitanya, well, it is logical to have a overlordship. So, for that purpose, he is using this word. Asanga Se Paramatmana or Paratmana. So, and so yuktam also means shutam shuti definitely says over lordship of uh, ishvara on over lordship on on these devatas and it is yuktam also means it is logical also because it is asanga chaitanya so bhagwan has a got a over lordship is logical because klesha karmadi asangamat since he is free he is asanga so he is free from all restrictions which kind of restrictions? Klesha karmadi means nothing to shackle him. Asangamat means free from. Free from Klesha karma, etc. Such kind of restrictions are not there. He is not a slave. Well, not a slave of a Klesha. He is not a slave of Ragadvesha. He has no Avidya. And he has no Asmita. He has no Abhinivesha. He has no karma. He has no Punyapapa. He has not to undergo experiences of Sukha Dukha, Vipaka. And he has no particular samskaras, this is good, this is bad, this is favorable, this is unfavorable. And therefore he is free. And why is free? Because asanga, asanga. And therefore definitely that's how it is, he has been used. So that asanga, asangatvam proves, I mean logically you can prove because of uh, this asangatvam, he has a overlordship. He is not affected by this klesha karma vipaka and ashaya. So, well, so this is what the uh, yogi says, this, that this is our vision of Ishvara, well, supported by uh, Shruti and Yukti. Verse 108. Jeevanam apyasangatvat klesha dirnahyatha picha viveka grahata klesha karma dipravuditam. So, he says uh, here, yoga philosopher is among, uh, you know, I mean, uh, they, they are answering a possible objection here. In previous shloka, in previous shloka we said uh, this jiva's uh, uh, slavery is due to this klesha karma, etc., these four, four factors, and Ishwara's mastery over lordship is due to absence of these four, four factors. So, jiva, but jiva is also a sangam, Ishwara is a sangam. And yet you say Jiva is a slave because of association with the fourfold problems. So Jiva is a Sangam, means associationless, relationless, right? And so associationless Jiva has a slavery due to association with fourfold factors. And associationless Ishara, Asanga, has mastery because of uh, absence of fourfold factors. So, if you accept Jiva is free from all uh, 
I mean, all these four four factors. Well, Jiva will all have a mastery if we ask them. Yeah, he says, if Jiva does not have this klesha karma, etc. If he is not, Jiva is not associated with klesha karma, vipaka and ashaya. He will also be a master like Ishara. And uh, so, but and then we say, yeah, that well, that Jiva, if he's, if if Jiva is free from a fourfold factors, and uh, we should not say because Jiva is a sangam. So he cannot, he, Jiva cannot have an association with anything, this Klesha Karma, etc. Like Ishwara, you say Ishwara is a Sangam. He does not have an association with these four four factors. And Jiva also is a Sangam. Then Jiva also should not have this association with four four factors. And then you say Jiva has association. Association less Jiva, Sangha Jiva has association with four four factors. Ishwara, who is also association less, who is relationless, well, who is unconnected to everything, he also has no relation with this. But then Jiva and Ishara both are basically Asangam, then both should not have association with this Klesh Karma, etc. Then how can you call Jiva is Samsari and Ishara is uh, Asamsari? How can you call like that? One you call master, another you call a uh, slave. How, how it is possible? So, well, he, he will manage. He, ha he will manage somehow. And you, you see their answer. We will we'll see the fallacy. So, Jivanam api asangatvat. Jivanam api asangatvat. Jiva has asangatvam. Jiva is asanga. Like what? Like Ishwara. So, klesha dihi na. It should not have klesha adi. Adi padat all this. Klesha karma, vipaka, ashaya, etc. So, uh, basically, jivas also should be free from four four factors. But uh, then he says, that's true. O Vedanti, what you are saying us is true. We have thought over it. But Jiva has a Agnanam, you see. Jiva has a Agnanam, and well, Jiva's, uh, 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 and therefore, basically, all the Jivas superimpose upon themselves all these fourfold factors. And therefore, how does he superimpose? He says, this actually what happens is, you know, these fourfold qualifications are, they belong to mind, like, uh, like Klesha, I have told you. Avidya. Avidya means actually not this Agnana. Avidya means that Adhyasa. We have talked, I have yesterday told you. Atmani, Anatma Buddhi. Anatmani, Atma Buddhi. That's done by mind only. And therefore Asmita, Asmi Bhava. I know. That's also mind. Ragadvesha. That's also mind. Abhinivesha. A strong attachment to the body, etc. That's also mind. And then Karma, Punya Bapa, etc. That also is mind. Karma Phala, pleasure, pain, mind. Everything mind, ashaya, samskaras, different impressions, vasanas, mind. He says basically all these fourfold factors belong to the mind. But due to the jiva has a upadhi called jnana, these fourfold factors basically are superimposed upon the atma which is asanda. And that's how jiva is afflict, getting afflicted with these fourfold factors. And so, uh, but why why this uh, he commits that kind of a mistake? Um, um, Proper, I mean, the, all these attributes of the mind, let it be at the mind. And why should uh, be uh, superimposed upon uh, this Atma? He said, because of the proximity. Because of the proximity, the attributes of one are superimposed upon the other. And uh, that's simple to understand because like, you know, our uh, crystal, which is basically free from all attributes, but as due to an association with that uh, flower, etc., which is nearby, which is nearby. It should be nearby. Uh, if you keep it five feet away, there will not be any color etc. in the crystal. So it should be nearby. And definitely such a flower which is nearby, if it is a red color or something, whatever, then definitely a crystal also appears red. And same way here also, mind is like a flower and uh, Atma is like a crystal, free from all attributes. But due to proximity of the mind and Atma, basically, the attributes of the mind, all this klesh, karma, vipaka, everything, well, they are superimposed upon atma. And that's how atma appears always. That is that is the jiva. So that's how jiva has a samsara. And they, this kind of a, you know, um, I mean the objects remaining near, well, superimpose their attributes upon something which is free from attributes. It's called upadi, you know very well. Upa means being closer. Adi means that which transfers uh, its attributes called Upadi. So Sthula Sharika is Upadi because its dharmas are transferred 
And uh, so that's how I am born, then I say. You feel it is all Vedanta, yeah. Let, let it go. He, this is a yoga. They have a microphone right now. The yoga people are giving an explanation. So, um, well, so he, I am born. So that is, well, definitely, uh, you know, that, that's nothing but a superimposition. The birth of the de birth of this gross body is superimposed upon I, the Atma. And that's how you have a notion called I am born. So, Klesha Karmadi Viveka Agrahataha. Verse, in verse, Vidyarnya says, Klesha Karmadi, this, all these fourfold factors, Klesha, Karma and all, Vipaka, etc. Viveka Agrahataha, well, Viveka Agrahataha, due to Aviveka, well, non-discrimination, the attributes of one is seen in other. So, they appear in Atma because of non-discrimination. So, and the lack of uh, this, uh, you know, discriminative knowledge, well, uh, uh, what is the, uh, what is that knowledge that this belongs to actually Buddhi, Klesha Karma, etc. belong to Buddhi, but I don't have that knowledge. In absence of that knowledge, I look upon all these attributes, etc., all these Klesha, etc., all these four, four factors in Atma. So the truth I don't know. So I transferred dharmas of the Buddhi to Atma. Like you, this is this is simple. It's everywhere. They they are saying, like he says, the moment of earth you transfer to sun, right? You say the sun is moving from east to west. Actually, <laughs> earth is moving from west to east. But anyway, uh, so the moment of earth is transferred to uh, uh, sun. Like uh, you know, our uh, emotions of the mind we transfer to the atmosphere also outside. So we say the day is very gloomy, like we say. Day is not gloomy, your mind is gloomy. But, but the emotion of the mind is transferred somewhere else. So this is a this is a regular phenomenon. So and well, uh, so I mean, uh, uh, this atmosphere is not good, etc., etc., in winter, this, that, etc. Actually, uh, it has nothing uh, to do with this kind of thing, but all these uh, things belong to the mind. So anyway, basically, so Atma, uh, seems to have them. It's actually, Atma is free from that. Atma being a Sangam, it is free from all this Klesha Karma, etc. And so Jiva is a Sangam, that is true. Ishwara is a Sangam, Jiva is a Sangam. But Jiva has that Ajnanam and therefore the attributes of the mind which is very close by, mind which is close, so attributes of the mind are um, transferred to the transferred to the Atma and therefore Jiva Atma has become Samsari. So then Yoga philosopher says, well, I hope on this thing I have already told you before also. Where? In verse number 100. Verse number 100, we have already told about it. Asangaya chitehe ved agrahat asangaya chitehe. Chite. So chit means, uh, chiti means here, jiva. And asangaya, which is asangam, has a ved agrahat, vivek agrahat. Due to non-discrimination, uh, well, the attributes of the prakriti, mind, etc., whatever you say, so that is transferred on purusha. And so that is how Jiva and Ishwara will have a difference. <coughs> now, uh, well, you will have a problem because you feel that, well, this Yoga and Vedanta looks very similar all the way, right? And the Jiva is, I mean, Jiva has a Upadhi called Agnanam and that's how he has Adhyasa and then Ragadvesha and this Abhinivesha, strong attachment to the body, etc. And Punyapapa, oh, yeah, that is very true. We also say the same thing. We also say the same thing. And uh, well, then what is the difference between these two philosophies? Very simple. Very simple. Things appear very, very big. And, or sometimes I make it big. But actually it is to create a little interest in you. To create some kind of a jignasa in you. But it is very simple. And you have to just pick a small, you know, a, in that balloon. You have to pick that, that what we call. Anyway, so that that um, kind of a thing it is. First thing is, yoga says jivatmas are many. See, where, where we strike, our, our surgical strike takes place now. So, basically, they say jivatmas are many. We ask, why do, we, why do you talk about plurality of jivas? He gives answer. <clears throat> well, because they have got different attributes. Everyone has got Klesha, Karma, etc., Vipaka, everything. And in among them also, it is different. 
your rag klesha means ragadvesha let us say so your ragadvesha is different right and uh, well then uh, your karmas punya papas are different and you get different type of karma phalas your samskaras are different my samskaras are different my ragadveshas are different my punya papam are different and then i undergo varieties of the pleasure and pain which which you don't have right now so well so all that is why in this fourfold factors there is a difference even though atma basically has out of adhyasa atma has this four four factors jivatma has also this four four factors but among them also there is a difference in that four four factors and therefore when well, therefore the jivas are many and uh, we ask but are these uh, four four factors these attributes are falsely i mean they are superimposed on atma yeah 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 they are superimposed we have already told you they they belong to the mind but they are superimposed upon this um, atma well we say how can the false attributes which i mean which are superimposed create a real difference in the jiva false attributes because you are counting manyness plurality based on the differences in attributes correct but those attributes are not belong to that jiva atma it are belong to the mind therefore jiva basically as He has no difference among themselves. Th- through those uh, attributes only you find a difference, and those attributes do not belong to them. They are false attributes for the jiva. If the attributes itself are false for the jiva, the plurality based on those attributes also will be false. How will you prove the plurality? This is a common sense. How will you prove the plurality of the jiva? Please tell us that this and this is different, and therefore let's take take two. then this this and this is different then let's take three now how will you prove you have to take into account the attributes but those attributes are not they don't belong to jivatma because you say jiva is asangam well and therefore uh, uh, the, the attributes of the mind are uh, definitely superimposed upon atma so there in jiva whatever attributes you see they are false attributes in mind they are right uh, real attributes we accept but in in jiva they are false attributes like the color in the crystal is a false color it's not a real color and therefore if you find it suppose there are three four crystals and uh, well you, you put uh, three or four different types of flowers nearby and now one crystal appear red one crystal appear orange and one crystal appear blue etc and you say now there are four crystal uh, four type four crystals well basically the and then you count in terms of color well that is not correct that's not correct and therefore that example my example is not proper but and you just take it in a, in a just uh, in a in a superficial way but what i'm saying is you find a plurality of a jiva basically based on attributes and those attributes really don't belong to them and therefore plurality also is well that is not a correct uh, way of looking at the jiva as a plural so the difference in jivas are basically false and if difference are false well how many jiva should be there definitely mm, there must be one jiva I means one one atma then therefore and uh, not only that uh, be- the between jiva and ishvara also the difference is mithya because you told us that um, jiva is having this attributes and is afflicted by this klesha karma etc and ishvara is one who is not afflicted by that but jiva also has no real those attributes and therefore basically and therefore between jiva and ishvara also you are telling us that uh, difference due based on these attributes only and therefore well that is that are, these are the false attributes in jiva and therefore jiva and ishvara also basically are are one and the same thing so jiva jiva difference jiva ishvara difference are not real difference whether now tell us o vedantin jiva jiva has a difference and jiva ishvara has difference or not i say yes i'm asking you last time jiva jiva difference and jiva ishvara difference is there or not no one time you are saying yes other time you are saying no yeah we are saying like that that's true so with respect to well from the vyavarika drishti from the standpoint of chidabhasa there is plurality and well there is a difference between jiva and ishvara also in terms of chidabhasa definitely so from the standpoint of chidabhasa there are there is a difference between jiva and ishvara and there is manyness plurality also in the jivas well but from the standpoint of the chaitanya this is one alone 
So this is how. So here it says asangaya uh, chitehe udiritam prak. Well, definitely it was mentioned before in verse number hundred. You can refer later. Verse hundred and nine. नित्यज्ञान प्रयत्नेच्छा गुणानीशस्य मन्वते असंगस्य नियंत्रुत्वं आयुक्तमितितार्किकाः So with the previous shloka, well, Yogi's uh, Ishra's topic is over. And now, Nayaikas, Naya philosophers, well, uh, they come and uh, well, they argue with these yogis. Actually, they are refuting each other, right? So, he says, O Yogi, your definition of Ishwara is self-contradictory. What is the contradiction? See, uh, he says, Asangasya Niyantrutvam Ayuktam. Ayuktam, not logical. Not Ayuktam, not fitting in Yukti. Not fitting in logic. And so, Asangasya i niyantruttam ayuktam. You say Ishwara is a asanga and also Ishwara is a niyanta. That is a contradiction. That's a contradiction. When you say um, ish, someone is a controller, automatically it brings in who is controlled. So you can't have a controller without a objects or beings who are controlled. If controlled, I mean, those beings or objects are not there, then how will you call yourself as a controller? And definitely in that case, there will be, a, if control controller is there, there must be a controlled being also, and then there will be a relationship of a controller-controlled relationship called Swami Dasa Sambandha. Controller Swami controlled dasaha, swami dasa sambandha will be there and therefore so if that sambandha, that kind of a relationship is there then how that Ishwara will be a sangha? Sangha means a sambandha. So Ishwara is a sangha means no relationship, no connection with anything. Then that Ishwara how can be a controller? Because a controller definitely is, con is has a connection, has a relationship with what is controlled. And therefore, well, so your uh, basically your explanation of this Ishwara as a Niyanta and telling also as Asanga is self-contradictory. Asangasya Ishwarasya uh, uh, this Niyantrutvam Ayuktam. Ayuktam. It's not logical. And therefore, well, definitely uh, this problem will be there. And Vedanti solve this problem ingeniously. They can't solve. They can't solve. Because we have this, you know, this mithya, etc. thing is so beautiful. So we, we solve the problem very nicely. We say Ishwara is a controller from a Vyavarika Drishti. Well, with his Upadi, Maya Upadi, he becomes a controller. And definitely he has a connection with the world and Jiva. World and Jiva, Jagat and Jiva, both are controlled. And Ishwara with his Maya Upadi, well, that is from the standpoint of a Vyavara. This from, from Mithya standpoint, he becomes a controller and Jiva and Jagat are controlled. And well, but from its own standpoint, Ishra is basically just pure consciousness from Paramahatik Drishti, from reality standpoint, well, he has, he is a Sangam, he has no connection with anything. And so, Ishra can be both. Ishra can be called controller, Sasangam has a connection with the control and Ishwara is Asangam also. Both the things are possible. How, how, how? Well, one person in a dream can be a rich person with five luxuries, luxury cars. And the same fellow in a waking state, he is a simply auto rickshaw driver. Is possible or not? Right? One person, then how, how? Auto rickshaw, that, that auto rickshaw also does not belong to him. That also belongs to somebody. He is simply driving and getting some money every day from that person who owns that auto rickshaw. Okay? And therefore that is possible. One can be owner of luxury cars and one can be just a, a, a driver who is having no vehicle. Where, how, how? 
That is not possible. Possible. Satta Vedat. That's all. Satta Vedat. From Pratibhasik standpoint, from dream standpoint, well, he is a owner. And from Vyavarik standpoint, he is not owner. He is just a driver. It's possible. One person alone from uh, different standpoints and from different uh, uh, realities, well, uh, this can be understood. So, Ishwar also, from Vyavarika Drishti, well, he is a controller and controls the Jiva and Jagat. And same Ishwara basically, from Paramatika Drishti, means from reality standpoint, well, definitely, is just a Sangha Chaitanya. And so, Sasangam and Asangam, both are possible. Connected and unconnected to anything, both are possible. That is our answer to them. They did not answer because for them, well, definitely, uh, Jiva, the difference between Jiva and Ishwar, etc. Is, is a real difference. So, that is what the answer is. We will see um, other things tomorrow. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Gurubhyo Namaha Harihi Om